Apple has recently released the new observation framework. This new approach for observing changes in SwiftUI significantly simplifies your code. Now we basically just have the new state wrapper, environment and bindable. In this video I will show you how to use it and what has changed. I will also show you the example from the previous video as the new observation also solves that issue. Let's get started. Okay, so I have a simple view here with the store object. Store is an observable object with the published variable counter. There's the text label with the counter value and the button to increase it. Now, in order for this to actually work, we need to annotate the store variable with a property wrapper. Let's see what options do we have right now before we introduce the new observation framework. For the observable object, we have a couple of choices here. We can use the observed object, which subscribes to an observable object and invalidates a view whenever the observable object changes. We can use the state object, which is a property wrapper type that instantiates an observable object. Or we can also use the environment object, which is the property wrapper type for an observable object that is being provided by a parent view. Now let's change the store class and add the new observable macro. To do this, just add the observable upfront. We no longer need the observable object and published, so let's remove it. Let's run the app. So the app works as expected. We no longer need observed object in front of the variable store and we no longer need the observed object here. We just have observable. As I mentioned at the beginning, it is much simpler now. And we have two new property wrappers and one which have the same name, but it is a little different. There is at state, at bindable, not binding, that was the old one. And the last one, at environment. Actually, we don't have any property wrapper here. And that's because by default, in the new observation framework, it acts as an observed object. If I would add the state wrapper to it, it would be similar to a state object. If you don't remember, the difference is that if you create an object here in the view and you don't use at state, each time you create this content view as a subview inside other views, if the parent view changes, this content view will be created again. So the store object will be initialized again and you will lose any data that was there. Let's copy it and create a new nested view. We have the second view below and it also has a counter with a button. When you tap the first one, it works. When you tap the second one, it also works as expected. But when you tap first button once again, the subview will be created once again, the star object will be initialized and the counter will be zero. To fix this, you can either inject the store view to this view, or you can add add state property wrapper. This way the store created here inside this view will be the source of truth and it works the same as state object used to work. Just be careful as it may not be always a good idea to create certain objects inside subviews. Sometimes passing them may be a better option. Okay, now let's try a new wrapper, bindable. You need to pass the store objects to the subview. Let's create a second store in the parent view. and add it to the subview. We have a binding to the second store object that has been initialized in the parent view. Let's add additional label to present its value. Yes, it works as expected, but if you would remove the bindable wrapper, it will still work. So why exactly do we need it? 
So the bindable actually supports creating bindings to the mutable properties of observable objects. Which means that if you would like to create, let's say, a slider to change the counter value, you could do it just like this. And don't forget to change the counter to double, as this is what slider operates on. The slider has a binding to the store and can change the counter value. But you can also create a local binding variable if you need it. So let's remove the bindable here and add it here. The store variable is now just a regular observed object and inside the view we have another local bindable property. Okay, we are almost there. Last but not least, the environment wrapper. Right now the store object is being created in this view. We can move it and pass it as an environment object. Let's copy this. Open the main app file and create a new state variable. This will be the source of truth. Using the environment, we will pass this object to the content view. Now we need to add the environment wrapper to the store. And update the SwiftUI preview. The downside of using the environment is that if you forget to set it on a view, your app will crash. The observation framework also solves the nested observable objects issue. I was talking about this in my last video. I will briefly show you the code from the last video and update it to the new observation framework. There are two observable objects, user and status. Status object is being used inside the user object. When you update the nested object status, SwiftUI will not trigger the view update. That's why we have this, object will change. This way the user object will trigger SwiftUI to update. So this works right now, but if we remove the object will change, it's no longer working. Now let's update the code with the new observation framework and check if this will help. So, as expected, it works with the new observation framework. That's all what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.